second part of the process into this vehicle inspection repair is vehicle half raised, further visual inspection, which demands a certain degree of dismantling. Working carefully in conjunction with the pre-prepared work schedule, I'm now going to take the wheel off so that I can better examine things like the discs, the pads, brake nylon hoses, uh, flexi and steel hoses, etc. So we'll begin by removing the wheel. First, what I'd like to do is so that this schedule remains clean and intact but visible, I'm going to attach it to the vehicle with a magnet. And begin taking the wheel off. I'm going to use a power tool. Um, I've no problem using a power tool for removal. And on the refitting of the wheel, um, we shall of course use a torque wrench. I've ob obtained the security socket, so we'll begin by taking that nut off first. You'll also notice that I've used a tray so that I can initially put the fasteners down without losing them and very carefully. Now, this is an issue we come across many, many times. Alloy wheels, steel hubs, if the correct preparation procedure um, and treatment agents haven't been used on prior servicing and repair, what you have is this. A wheel that is quite literally partially seized on. So, correct tools, hide mallet. I'm going to rotate the wheel, carefully striking the back of the rim in order to free it off. Now it might be both advisable and safe here to ask some help and assistance from David to catch this wheel. I don't want it falling off um, quickly. I'm also going to put some gloves on. So we're thinking now in terms of health and safety. Um, fortunately I wear glasses which have reinforced lenses so my glasses do double for eye safety. But we shall remove now this wheel. I'm going to demonstrate later why it's important to part of the preparation to clean these flanges off and lubricate them so this doesn't happen in the future. So David if you can kindly yep. just rotate for me please. Okay. That wasn't as bad as I anticipated but nonetheless it was still partially seized. So we should treat that hub later on. And if you can you just let the vehicle down a little I'm going to take the opportunity, as I suggested, this is still part of pre-inspection. We've not actually started the dismantling procedure uh, with regard to repair or service. Because we've steam cleaned this vehicle, under here now is pretty clean and it's fairly easy for, uh, for me to have a look to see if there's any um, collision damage, mechanical damage, hydraulic, uh, flexi hoses, etc. So I'm quite literally going to give these flexi hoses a real vigorous um, flex and, 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 and move. I want to see if there's any signs of cracking, um, any signs of chafing. Quite often if the vehicle's been involved in accident damage then the evidence is often here to be seen. You look at the fasteners, you look at the wheel linings, uh, look at the suspension, look for the bolts. Are there signs of witness marks of recent work? It looks original. I can't see any um, recent work. I have no reason to suspect this has had any um, major damage or replacement. The hoses look quite good. I'm um, checking the bushing, the clipping. Uh, I'm checking the electrical connections, both to the ABS. They're clipped properly. Cable appears to be in good condition. Brake level sensor wiring. BMW use this small conduit here to actually contain the sockets. Um, regrettably, though, it doesn't restrict moisture, dirt, and ingress, as you can see. So one of the issues here is uh, take a look inside these. Um, if there are any issues with ABS sensor input, um, brake warning pad level sensor errors, that's the first place to go and take a look. So it's a bit of common sense here, really. Next, I'll we'll close that for now because we are going to conduct a serial evaluation of this system in some depth later with David. I'm now really concentrating on the hub and initially, there's a little bit of disc wear. Perhaps I think it might be wise just to mic this up and I think we'll also conduct um, a check for run out. 
So really, when we're examining a disc, we're looking for even wear across the whole face, across the entire face surface, or a very large percentage of it. I'm looking for excessive wearage, and in particular, the back often wears greater than the front, so make a point of checking the back carefully. Uh, I'm looking for pad life, um, certainly in need of replacement. I'm looking at the anti-rattle springs, I'm looking at the disc, the caliper, the fist. I'm looking at the piston, doesn't appear to be any hydraulic leak, so it's not wet. Bear in mind we have steamed this vehicle off, but nonetheless there will still be some evidence of any leakage. I'm taking a look around the back. Once again, all the bolts appear original. There's no suspension bolts been disturbed recently. So I'm fairly happy at this point to continue the process of dismantling. I've seen nothing additional that causes me to contact the customer with a revised quote. We seem to be um, um, in a situation where the initial um, assessment of the vehicle was an accurate one. So I think what I'd like to do now is just to be absolutely sure I'm going to mic this disc, check the thickness of the disc against the um, standard dimensions from a database and I'll demonstrate how to check run out using a magnetic base and a DTI gauge, dial test indicator gauge. So if we can just um, pause for a moment, we'll come back once I've set the tools up and then we'll discuss the benefits of this test.